Hello, in this uh, video we're going to be covering the linear quadratic regulator, or at least begin to cover it. And um, this, uh, this system is very important in uh, control theory, especially optimal control theory, which is what we're going to be doing. And no matter if you're in mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, or even ECE, this system has a lot of, a lot of implications in a lot of the modern systems that we use in real life, the linear quadratic regulator. And we're going to break it down all the way down to the roots and we're going to have fun with it and that's the main goal of this to be educational and fun as well so let's get started with it what is the linear quadratic regulator well we're going to break it up like this first linear what does that mean well linear just refers to the dynamics of the system the plant itself and in all of these uh, discussions we're going to assume a discrete system so what do I mean by discrete system? Well, we could also do LQR for continuous systems. And I'll do this as well, but in a different video, because the technicalities are a bit different. So we're going to assume a discrete system for now. It's the easier case. And what I mean by discrete is that we have an index k that labels the time. And k goes from 0, 1, all the way to some final time, capital N. And it could be 10 seconds, it could be 100 seconds, whatever, capital N. So this is our discrete time system, okay? So let's break it down, linear, what does that mean? That refers to the plant. And our plant dynamics are gonna be given by xk plus one is equal to ak, xk plus bk, uk, okay? And xk is our state, which we assume to be an rn, just an n-dimensional state vector. And our uk, this is our control. And we assume the control to be an m-dimensional state vector. I mean, m-dimensional vector. So this is completely general. A and B matrices, these uh, system matrices, they can be time varying as well. If you see the subscripts here, or they could be time invariant. We can have an LTI system, or we can have an LTV system. So this is the linear model right here. Now, quadratic. So linear check. What does quadratic mean? Well, in optimal control problems, we have some system, in this case a linear system, and we want to find the optimal control that minimizes some cost function. And I'm going to denote it by j, j0 to be exact. And in the LQR problem, the quadratic refers to the cost function, which is going to be written as 1 half xn transpose as an xn. This refers to the terminal cost which you can see with the subscript n, so terminal cost, plus, and then we're going to have a running sum. So 1 half, and then k, a sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of this quantity over here. And let me make some room. Let me just delete this real quick. This running cost is going to be given by also a quadratic, xk transpose qk xk plus uk transpose rk uk and let me just write the state here x is in rn and u is in rn okay so our cost function has uh, two parts it has a terminal cost and what is known as the running cost okay and the whole point is that we want to find the optimal controller u optimal control sequence that minimizes this cost function, okay? And lastly, what does regulator mean? Well, regulator just means that we have an initial condition x0 and we wanna steer the system to the origin. So xn equals zero. That is the definition of a regulator. It steers systems to zero. There's also extensions of LQR to tracking problems. And in that case, we wanna follow some reference trajectory, say R of t. And that, that solution is very similar to what we're going to do, but it's not exactly the same. We're just focusing on the regulator here. Okay, so that's basically the whole problem setup. And we're going to consider two cases. We're going to consider one case where we have a fixed final state. Fixed final state. And that just means that we're enforcing the constraint that xn has to be zero. Okay, there's a difference between wanting to steer systems to zero and fixing that it has to be zero because in this case this is an extra constraint on the system right as opposed to case b which is free final state 
And you might be thinking, well, they're both going to zero, so what's the difference? Well, we'll, we'll see in due time. But for now, I'm just going to say that for the free final state, we have to include this terminal cost over here. Because since we're not fixing that terminal state has to be zero, we have to include this term over here such that when we minimize the cost, this quantity becomes very small so that the final states get close to the origin. But we don't have to worry about that for now. Okay, so I'm going to make a new page and we can get started. Okay, so I've just written down everything we talked about for, um, for ism notation and we can get started. So the first thing we need to do in all of these optimal control problems, we have to construct what is known as the Hamiltonian, denoted by HK over here. And if you've never seen this before, I'll make another video on it, but it would be good to uh, know some background on optimization. But if, if not, just go with it for now, and it will make sense a bit later. The Hamiltonian is defined as the Lagrangian, L, plus L lambda k plus 1 transpose. These are the Lagrange multipliers, also known as the costate, times fk. And fk are just our dynamics here. So if you've never seen this before again, it's, that's okay. I'll make another video on this, but just go with it for now. So the Lagrangian, as I said, well, I haven't said, but the Lagrangian is the term, the coefficients in this running cost over here. So in this case, since we're doing, dealing with a quadratic cost, it's going to be 1 half xk transpose qk xk, whoops, plus uk transpose rk uk. And then we have to add to this lambda k plus 1, our Lagrange multipliers, times fk, which is just ak xk plus bk uk. And I'm probably going to drop these subscripts k on these matrices because it's kind of uh, tedious to write it all the time. But just know that this can be easily extended to time varying systems as well. Okay, so we have the Hamiltonian. That is great. Now what? Well, there are three necessary conditions for any optimal control. And again, these come from constraint optimization theory, and I'll make another video on that later. But for now, I'll just tell you the conditions. Number one. This is also known as the state equation. And all it says is that the state at time x k plus 1 is equal to the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to lambda k plus 1. And this is kind of trivial because you see that when we take the derivative with respect to lambda, we just get, obviously, the linear system that we had in the first place. And I'm going to be dropping these uh, subscripts. So that's kind of trivial. Um, Number two, this is also known as the co-state equation. So you see how this was a state equation for, this was an equation for the state. Now we have an equation for lambda k, which is the co-state, also known as the Lagrange multipliers. And the condition is that lambda k is equal to the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the state. So you can kind of see this uh, duality going on here. And that's why they're called state and co-state. So let's see, let's take the derivative with respect to the state. So I'm going to do this in blue. Um, we have one term here and one term here. So the derivative of this guy over here, oh, and I forgot to mention this, but there are some assumptions on these matrices, and I'll write them in the corner over here. Um, and we assume that this matrix Q, the uh, state matrix, the state weights, we assume that they're all positive semi-definite. And what that means is that all of their eigenvalues are greater than zero, and they are all symmetric matrices. We also assume that the control weights, RK, are positive definite. So this is a little more tight than this constraint. This is a little looser. Okay, And these will be important later on. But when we take the derivative of a quadratic form with a positive semi-definite weighting matrix, it just becomes uh, q times xk. Okay, if you think about think about it like this, what's the derivative of x squared? This is just 2x. Generalize that to matrices, and you get the derivative of a quadratic form is equal to q times xk. The derivative of a quadratic is a linear. Okay, and then lastly, we have this derivative over here, and since this is linear in x, all we're going to get is a transpose times lambda k plus 1. Okay, so that is the co-state equation. 
let me erase this real quick. And then we have one more equation to go, which is also known as the stationarity condition. So stationarity. And what this says is that the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the control is equal to zero. That's why it's called stationarity, because it's equal to zero. So what is the derivative with respect to the control? We have this term here, and we have this term here. Again, since R is positive definite, it's symmetric, and the derivative is just going to be R times UK. And then we're adding to this the derivative of the second term, which is going to be just B transpose times lambda K plus 1. And this is equal to 0, right? This is equal to 0. So we can immediately solve for the optimal control, UK star, star for optimal. Um, and this is pretty easy. We just subtract this to the left-hand side, and we take the inverse of r, and we get the optimal control. So negative r negative 1, b transpose lambda k plus 1. You see, all I did was I moved this to the left-hand side, and then I took the inverse. And this is why, by the way, that we had the stricter condition for r. Remember this? is because positive definite matrices, they have inverses that exist. So this is kind of important here. But we've already found the optimal control. So you might be thinking, oh, are we done? Well, unfortunately not, because we have this lambda k plus 1 here, and we do not know this, really. But in general, we have the form of the optimal controller. So now we have one, two, and three equations that are the optimal, they're the necessary equations for an optimal control. So I've made a new uh, page here, and all I've done is just summarize everything that we've done so far. and Going back to our problem right now, we see that in our optimal control, we have a lambda k plus 1. And this, is, uh, this is not good because we cannot really do anything with that. So for now, since this video is already 12 minutes long, I'll just summarize this by, let's plug in first. One thing that we can do is plugging in this optimal control into here, into the state equation. So let's see what that gives us. We get um, xk plus 1 is equal to ak xk plus bk times this term over here. We'll do it in a different color, negative rk, negative 1, bk transpose, and the k plus 1. Okay, and then just distributing that all out, we get a times x, sorry, minus b r negative 1, b transpose, and then the cosstate. Okay, so this is the state equation. Right, and this is a uh, okay. This is good for now. And then we also have the co-state equation, which I'm just going to write right under it here. So lambda k is equal to qk xk plus a transpose times lambda k plus one. And notice what's happening here. We have a coupled set of equations, right, with these coefficients in front. So you see how we have xk here, xk here, and we have this coefficient times lambda k plus 1, and a transpose times lambda k plus 1. So in fact, we can write this whole thing in matrix form as follows. xk plus 1 lambda k as a vector in this case. And quick question, what, what is the length of this vector? Well, this vector, since both of these are in Rn, this is going to be a r to the 2n vector, right? So this is equal to, and now we have this matrix, which is ak over here, qk over here, negative bk, rk negative 1, bk transpose, and then ak transpose, forgot the k, um, and then times, well, what do we have here? xk and lambda k plus 1. Right, so this is our matrix equation, vector matrix equation for the state and the cosstate, respectively. So we see that in this linear quadratic regulator problem, our state and cosstate they're actually coupled together through this differential equation. And this matrix over here it has a special name, it has a very special name, and is denoted by H, and H 
stands for the Hamiltonian matrix. It's funny, this guy, Hamilton, he shows up all over the place. There's a whole branch of physics called Hamiltonian mechanics that's very similar to this. But uh, he's a very, he was a very influential guy. So H is a Hamiltonian matrix, and it satisfies a special property. Um, matrix H, and by the way, this matrix is 2n times 2n um, in terms of the dimensions. So a Hamiltonian type matrix satisfies this inequality here, jhj is equal to h transpose. And you can obviously, oh sorry, where j is equal to um, 0 and then identity, identity 0. And there should be a negative sign here. So j is a spe special, I mean sorry, this Hamiltonian matrix is a special type of matrix that satisfies this equality right here. And I'm not really going to get too much into this. You can read online for more of this, for more theory about this. But just know for now that we have a Hamiltonian matrix that describes the coupling between the state and the co-state. One more thing that I want to point out here is that you see for the state, it progresses forward in time, right? xk plus 1 is equal to blah, blah, blah times xk. But the co-state equation, it progresses backwards in time we have lambda k here in terms of lambda k plus 1. So it turns out that this set of difference equations is actually a two-point boundary value pro problem. Two-point boundary value problem. And in general, these types of problems are very difficult to solve, analytically at least. Um, and usually, whoops, did not want to do that. And in general, you, uh, you definitely need to solve these problems on the computer with some kind of simulations. But we're going to solve this LQR problem analytically under some very important assumptions. But we're going to do this in the next video. So I just want to wrap it up here. All right.